Hey, what's up everyone, Ollie here. So I've already unboxed the iPhone 13 mini and the iPad mini. I don't know if they'll already be on the channel, but anyway, now we have the iPhone 13 Pro. I have the graphite model here. It's supposed to be the same as the 12 Pro, but we'll see because I also still have my 12 Pro and we can compare it as well. So I have both boxes here, the 13 Pro and the 13 mini, just so you can see the size difference and I'll see the box difference as well. All the Pro models come in a black box and the standard models, well, the 13 and 13 mini come in a white box. Put those aside because we're unboxing the 13 Pro. So like I mentioned in the 13 mini video, the packaging has changed a little bit. There's no plastic cling film, no plastic shrink wrap or anything like that. Obviously to do with the environment and stuff like that. Apple are making more of a sort of movement when it comes to how they package their products. So now there's actually just pull tabs for the box itself. So let's get into it. So there's two pull tabs, one on the top, one on the bottom. And then we have the iPhone itself. Wow, the first thing I noticed already is the camera bump is ginormous, Jesus Christ. And how much it even sticks out. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll get it out in a second, we'll have a look. But wow, the camera bump is massive. Holy crap, okay. Um, in the box, obviously, we don't get a charging brick as expected. We get SIM card eject tool, uh, just the one Apple sticker, uh, a white one. I think at one point, they used to do colored stickers, space gray stickers. We also have lightning to USB-C. Now, that is something that I think I was a little bit disappointed at. It would have been nice to see USB-C in the Pro models, at least. Like, um, yeah, it's, it's just a shame that we're still on Lightning. Maybe next year, who knows? But yeah, we need to see USB-C on all the things. So let's get into the phone itself. I'll move the box out of the way and let's... Oh yeah, that's nice. So, yeah, obviously this is the graphite color. So I have my standard 12 Pro here from last year. Let's get that out so we can compare the two. Okay, so this is the 12 Pro from last year. I think the colors are the same. It looks like it's the same to me. Yeah, it's the same, right? It looks the, it looks same. the same. But you can see the camera bump. Wow, holy crap. The camera bump is massive. The camera bump is absolutely huge compared to the 12 Pro. That's actually insane. I can definitely also tell that it's a little bit thicker, but it's so such a small difference. Oh, actually, we can also see that the power button has been moved down a little bit on the 12 Pro, well, the 13 Pro, and the 12 Pro has it, I nearly dropped them then, <laughs> but the 12 Pro has it higher up. Now, that's something I didn't even notice, something I didn't even know had changed. It's just the camera bumps that are really different this year. Wow. We still have lightning on the bottom as expected. The speaker grills are also the same. Top of the devices, I still have so much dust on this, is the same. The volume buttons, are they in the same place? Oh, the volume buttons have also been moved down a little bit. So you can see, I'll try and bring it closer. You can see the volume buttons are just a little bit further down on the 13 Pro compared to the 12. Um, but yeah, let's get this thing booted up. So one of the things for me this year, when it comes to the 13 Pro compared to the 13 Pro Max, unlike last year, the 12 Pro Max had all the sensor shift stuff. It also had a little bit of a better camera. This year, the 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max have exactly the same cameras. So whichever one you choose, it doesn't matter you get exactly the same specs. The only difference between the 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max is of course, better battery life because they can fit a bigger battery, battery in it. And of course the bigger screen as well. That's really the only difference. So thankfully this year, it's not really worth getting the 13 Pro Max unless you want the bigger screen and the bigger battery. So let's get my standard 12 Pro and let's have a look at the notches. You can actually see the notches side by side here. Jesus Christ, this, this 13 Pro sits up so much compared to <laughs> compared to the to the to the 12 pro that camera bump is just ridiculous let's actually let's have another look at the camera bump you can see 
that size difference of the camera. I'll bring it a bit closer. Wow, it's bulging, I tell you. It's bulging, all right. So if we have a look at the notches again, you can see the size difference on the notches. So Apple is saying that the 13 Pro now has a notch which is 20% smaller. But to me, it actually looks much smaller than 20%. You can also see the earpiece has been moved up. So the earpiece is down here on the 12 Pro, but on the 13 Pro it's been moved up right to the top. And I assume because they moved the earpiece up, they'll also bring, they were also able to bring the sensors, the cameras, everything a bit closer below it. But it's interesting to see that they kept the notch. I can understand why they kept the notch because an iPhone is recognizable for that notch. Obviously, I would have liked maybe a punch, is it a punch hole, pinhole hole camera? Punch. Hole punch camera, whatever it is. I think that would have been quite nice to have. But at the same time, when I'm using my iPhone, I actually forget about the notch, mostly because content isn't up there. Most of the content isn't up there. That's usually your status bar where you have the date, the time, um, battery life, uh, Wi-Fi, signal, all that sort of stuff. So for me, yeah, the notch isn't the biggest deal, but it's nice to see it being smaller. The only surprising thing for me is that you can't change the battery to show percentage. That's a big thing that people still request because to see the percentage, you still have to scroll down to see the, well, swipe down to get the percentage. It would have been nice to just be able to have it straight in the status bar. So this year, of course, the biggest changes are when it comes to the cameras. So we had the 12 Pro here with the cameras, then we had the 13 Pro. As I said, look at that difference. It is just ridiculous how much bigger the camera is on the 13 Pro. So when we actually look at the specs for the cameras, the telephoto now has an aperture of 2.8 compared to two from last year, which is interesting to see. Usually you'd think that they would have a lower aperture to let more light in. The ultra wide now has an aperture of 1.8 compared to 2.4, which was my biggest issue with the 12 Pro. The ultra wide pictures, I just felt like you really needed a lot of light to get nice sharp pictures. There was a lot of graininess in the pictures before, so it's nice to see a lower aperture number on the ultra wide. It should mean better low light images, a lot less grainy images. And then the standard wide lens now has a slight increase of 1.5 compared to 1.6. That shouldn't really be too much of a difference from last year, but I'm sure with the lenses, with sensor shift and all that sort of stuff, the pictures should be better than the 12 Pro. I'll be comparing them though. I'll be doing a camera test testing out the iPhone 13 Pro camera, seeing what it's capable of, because I love my photography. I love my videos and photography. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I upload a lot of photos. So I'm looking forward to testing out the camera on the 13 Pro. Another thing with the iPhone 13 Pro cameras is that they're now capable of recording ProRes video, but there is something to keep in mind. The 128 gigabyte models can only record ProRes at 1080p, but the 256 gigabyte models and up can record ProRes at 4K. Now ProRes is more of a sort of industry standard, industry sort of filming standard. I don't see that many people using it. I think anyone who's gonna use it is into professional filmmaking and they will most likely go for the larger models anyway. And the reason why usually, I don't know the actual technical specifications or anything, but the reason why usually you need bigger storage options for things like ProRes is because larger SSDs usually have faster read write. So ProRes video consumes a lot of data. Having a 128 gigabyte iPhone, you're gonna eat up your storage very quickly and you're not gonna be able to write the footage to the storage quick enough. So that's why usually the storage options are bigger and that's most likely the reason why you can only record 4K ProRes on the 256 gigabyte models and up. Again, this also has cinematic mode. I'm looking forward to testing that out, seeing what cinematic mode is like. I'm hoping it's good. Um, from the keynote and stuff, like I've said before, I wasn't too much of a fan of the artificial focus racking and whatever else and the artificial blurring and stuff. But who knows, in person, once I actually start using it, it might be a lot better. The 13 Pro also has the new A15 Bionic chip. Now the A15 Bionic chip compared to the standard 13 just has one extra GPU core, which means better graphics performance. But when you compare it to the A14, by the sounds of it, it is very similar in performance. So I can only assume that A15 has just been optimized a little bit more to get that extra bit of battery life. I think you can get, what is it, two and a half hours? Two out, two and a half hours, two hours more of battery life out of the 13 Pro. So obviously it's always good to see better battery life. I didn't actually have too much of an issue when it came to the battery on my 12 Pro. 
I didn't have to charge it at the end of the day. And if I was a heavy user, well, if I used it heavily in the day, I might need to charge it around five or six o'clock, so end of the work day. But obviously it's always nicer to see, well, it's always nice to see bigger battery, better battery life on the new models. One of the biggest features for me is actually ProMotion. I don't actually know what ProMotion is like. I haven't used the phone yet. So let's have a look. Oh, wow. Holy crap. <laughs> There's actually a big difference. It's hard to show it on camera, but wow, if I, Honestly, the, I feel like the animations on my 12 Pro almost look juddery compared to this, even the scrolling. Holy crap, okay. Um, yeah, big difference when it comes to ProMotion, 120 hertz compared to 60 hertz. But an interesting thing with ProMotion, Apple have done, is that it's not always at 120 hertz because if it was, that would absolutely kill your battery life. It actually changes depending on what's on the screen. So right now it's, sitting at 10 hertz. I think it's 10 hertz. That's as low as it gets when it's a static screen like this. But as, I, as soon as I start scrolling, I can definitely tell that the ProMotion is in play and I can see it's just so smooth. And because it's OLED as well, I'd say, I'd argue that it's even better than the iPad Pros because the iPad Pros just still use LCD panels. When you have an OLED, there's no, I think it's like motion blur or like ghosting. Yeah, ghosting I think is the right term. There's no ghosting at all. It's just buttery smooth. Wow, okay. Um, definitely a big difference for me, for sure. I am really impressed by the ProMotion. I really like it. And that's definitely one of the defining features when it comes to the Pro models. So that's pretty much it for the iPhone 13 Pro unboxing. I will have a review coming and I'll also have a separate camera review coming as well because I'm really interested in the cameras on this. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to enable that notification bell so you can be notified when I do upload those videos. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.